the way okay. is which you're that way <laughs> oh that's backwards okay <laughs> i wonder if we're all through the same way <laughs> i mean i don't know man immersive view change immersive view help me i'm being immersed start look <laughs> Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. I can I, I'm with you, man. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> oh no. Extreme close up. Okay, that's pretty good. This All is right. Hard. So yeah, I, I was looking <laughs> so I'm hoping next week, let's see, is it'll be next week maybe uh for October that we'll have the the old um Oh look, see Matthews here. Okay, let's let's change immersive. I have to change it and start it for every new person. Um, cool. Hi. Greetings, Matthew. Thank you so much for joining us, and and greetings, James. And then Ed. Ed's here too. All right, good. We got a full lineup here. If anybody else shows up, then they don't fit at the at the table. That's bad. <laughs> Okay, if anybody else shows up, I'll punt out of the immersive view. Thank you, everybody, for for coming to our to our meeting. Uh, this is the resuming our FPGA startups, and they're they're we borrow very heavily from Agile. So what we do is sort of the stand up style um, to touch base and to to record everything that we're that we're accomplishing and to see if there's any resources that are needed, which is very important for people doing this sort of work, and also if there's any roadblocks in the way. Uh, because when you have a roadblock and you can't fix it, uh, then calling in other people is how, how we get it uh, resolved or dissolved. So that's the that's the whole point. So yeah, let's let's go down the table. So greeting greetings, Matthew. Uh, if you'd like to to lead us off here uh, with uh, introduce yourself and and tell us what you've been up to, what you got planned, if you need any resources or have any roadblocks or anything else. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm just as by way of introduction, um, Matthew Wishick. I've um, lived in the San Diego area for many, many years. I uh, recently relocated to New Mexico. Um, but while I was in San Diego, I'd worked uh, just so as part of an introduction, I, I'd worked at TRW on the F22 project, spent a few years in Nokia mobile phones, and then uh, went to a a uh, startup up in Encinitas, uh, Comquest Technologies, where uh, it's been an interesting journey. Um, being, we were part of uh, IBM for a while and part of a startup that did an IPO and then um, got sold to a company in Santa Barbara where we've been with for the last 20 years. And so uh, it's just been an interesting progression. Uh, my expertise is ASICs and FPGAs. Um, and I'm uh, working on um, in my day job uh, multi gigabit uh, QAM modulation modems. Um, so I'm just trying to kind of get my foot in the door here with ORI. I haven't done any projects yet or really participated in anything. Um, I'm trying to see how I can integrate uh, you know, my work schedule with uh, being able to volunteer and doing some uh, participation here. So I'm just kind of lurking at the moment, um, but wanted to join in and you know get more get my feet wet, you know, more wet as it were, to um, again see how I can uh, fit in and contribute. So that's uh, my story, and thank you for letting me share. Wow, so you have a wealth of experience, and I'm sure a lot of stories. Uh, that's a, quite a broad diversity of uh, of things that you've encountered in the world. Uh, thank you so much for for being here and uh yeah hopefully we can um present to you a variety of things to do and the resources that that we have um so yeah look, looking forward to that thank you yeah go ahead ken tell us uh what you've been up to and what you got planned and roadblocks and resources yeah. needed uh it's interesting you mentioned conquest our neighbor dan beach uh used to work there i don't know if you know dan but uh you know, I, I, you know, the um, Conquest was kind of, at the time, there were two major groups there, a, uh, a broadband group, um, which I was part of, and then the the AMPS uh, cell phone chipset group. And so I don't really 
The name sounds vaguely familiar, but I don't think I really worked with him at all. Well, I have a similar background, um, ASIC, uh, FPGA work. I worked at uh, Qualcomm up until uh, end of May and uh, sort of took the summer off here. Uh, I think uh, it's time for me to really focus. I'm hoping to use ORI as kind of a springboard, get uh, my tools and, uh, you know, uh, tool set kind of tuned up and um, get get focused and, and, and get some good experience to get back into the workforce here uh, in, in, you know, next year time frame. So I'm looking to, to make contributions. I have a background in modems, FPGAs, ASICs. And uh, right now I'm uh, currently going through uh, Fred Harris's uh, uh, multi-rate uh, filter book that uh, Michelle loaned me. So I'm enjoying that. It's actually That's a great an book. easier read than the other book she gave me. So, <laughs> so anyway. That's I, I, what I've been up to. Beating my head on multi rate filters a lot lately. <laughs> oh, good. Maybe we can help because what we what we ambitions are is to use a, a polyphase channelizer on the the receiver side on our on our transponder, um, you know, which is intended for both space or or terrestrial deployment. Um, so getting a really good solid implementation and over the air demo is the goal. And the broader goal or the mission of our nonprofit is to do professional development work uh, through open source um, FPGA and, and software hardware projects uh, to, so that, that people can, can get their hands on this sort of stuff and, and get the skills and, and learn how amazing it is uh, because sometimes there's lots of barriers in the way. So that's kind of the mission. Uh, I'm the current, current CEO of ORI. I've served in a number of roles and hope to continue working working that way. Um, so just here to here to help make it easy to participate. All right, go ahead, Paul. Okay, my name's Paul Williamson, KB5MU. I'm a, sort of an FPGA adjacent developer, uh, software and embedded systems and digital. It's uh, my expertise. I was also a Qualcomm alumnus, but it's been many years. Uh, my main reason for being in this meeting actually is that I run the remote lab West it's physically located here in my house. We have FPGA resources for everybody to use remotely for, uh, for open source projects, including ORI's projects. Um, I've also been working on some of the, some of the tasks that are needed for, for some FPGA development and related stuff like the uh, opulent voice demonstration code uh, which is currently running uh, in C on target hardware, but not in FPGA country at all. And I've been distracted from that of late for, by the RF Bitbanger project, putting together kits to, to mail out. And those have been mailed out finally, and they're out of my hair, such as it is um, for the time being. So um, we'll see what happens with that over the coming days. Otherwise, I'm just here to, to support you guys to uh, to use a remote lab. Yeah, thank you. Very appreciated. Okay, uh, James, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm James Wheeler, Keel Light 7 Keel Elko. Um, I am a student at Oregon State University, as opposed to all of you fine individuals who have a much more illustrious career than I than I'm ho than I might end up in. Uh, my expertise is mostly in uh, bioengineering. A lot of my focus is on synthetic devices for use in medical environments. But I am also here with ORI as I am a assistant in managing Remote Lab South, which is similar to Remote Lab West. It's just over in a different part of the country. That's been a lot of our work there. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Yeah, we do have an interest and, um, and would like to support more uh, biomedical. Our, our main interest in this area, the place that we've contributed the most is bacteriophage, um, open source bacteriophage work. Because uh, most of it is proprietary and most of it is aimed towards uh, towards humans uh, dealing with uh, some some very difficult in infection management. Um, our our particular way 
to, to try to make a lot of forward progress here is also very humanitarian, but it has to do with the food supply. So fish farms have a whole lot of infection issues, bacteria issues. This is a growing problem. Um, it's growing faster than the, than the food source itself. So uh, bacteriophage to manage uh, antibiotic resistance in fish is, is what we would like to try to get into. James has helped here several times with trying to get uh, some some grants from uh, from various government agencies, and so far we have not stuck the landing on that. But if we keep at it, I think that we could we could do it. Uh, so that's that's one of the things that we do. And greetings to Ed. Uh, please, you have the floor. Tell us all about your very exciting week or two that you've had here, and and maybe let us know how we can help. Sure. Um, uh, my name is Ed Friesema. I'm a PhD student at the uh, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and I'm um, going for my PhD in computer science. I've interned with um, uh, Jack Propulsion Laboratory and been the communications lead for RebelSat, which is our university project to get a RebelSat up. It's been going for three years now. So we've got a, a microsatellite. There's a little, the CL, the Common Launch Space Initiative has a bonus if you're the first university in your state to get something up. So Nevada's still free game in that area. We just got to basically got to beat Reno. Um, so uh, that's um, no offense to Elko. But uh, yeah, so we're working on that, but we've been working three years and we have a pretty good project together. And I'm not communications lead anymore, but I am helping them since they built a satellite antenna on top of our SEB building I'm helping that get verified as a satnog station and helping train some of the younger uh, undergrads on basic comms radio modulation software whatever they, the basics that they need um, to be in the comms team and also my uh, the plus of that is I get some people to help me with my work which I'm going to tell you right now my dissertation is basically focusing on using applying machine learning to cognitive radio to adaptively uh, do spectrum sensing and uh, adaptive coded modulation on the DVB S2X codec. So that's how I come to this group is that I'm interested in. Now, right now, my stuff is very basic. My personal setup is very basic. It's an RTSDL, RTL SDR. And an antenna that in the antenna that I hook up, I have a very nice antenna and a very cheap dongle. So eventually, I would like to barely be able to utilize some of this FPGA technology and uh, push it further. It's not the main focus, but it's something I'm interested in, and I'd also like to see how it works on that platform. So that when I my goal is to create a software tool that can implement this. And then hopefully bring it out to the community, to you guys, to come out and give me a little hand in collecting data with it and seeing what it does at different locations, at different areas. How will it, can it improve quality of service? What the big areas I'm trying to figure out is figuring out like where is quality of service really getting hit? Like under what conditions and what situations? And the desert is good in some ways in that we're really high altitude. In some ways, this is a pretty easy spot to pick stuff up. I'd like to be able to get some data, data from some more diverse sources for my dissertation presentation. So when I'm ready, I would like to present this to the group and see if some of us would be, you guys would be willing to take it. As far as hardware accelerating it, I'm doing this because that's what I'm interested in and it's fun. And I like playing with VHP, FPGA. Directly to my thesis, it's not, at, it's adjacent, but not that relevant. Some of our advisors here get really, they all get hives when you mention using hardware on things like things like FPGAs because it looks like that's not software. So they get upset. Um, I don't, so I might not use it directly, but it's very much an interesting topic and I love playing with those things. Um, I put up, I'm also part of the rocketry club and I'm shooting up a rocket and put my, built my own telemetry sensor for that. So I'm looking forward to that next month, but, um, but yeah, so we have a big presentation coming up Wednesday. I've been working on it and Michelle's been, helping me with some suggestions, narrowing down like what's the actual state of the art here. But that's what I'm in. I'm not, my project is kind of on my own. I'm not going to, but I am keeping an eye on the remote labs and playing with it and making sure I can hook into it when I need to. Um, it will be up to our advice, my advising committee. And that's something I'm actually probably going to figure out next week 
whether they actually want to integrate FPGAs in this work or if we want to keep it a software only design. My guess is that they're going to go for the latter, so I won't use it, but it's still great. And I would definitely, when the software tool is ready, I'd love to show it to you guys and see what you think, see what you think of the interface. It's basically just, it's to your guys' perspective, it's going to look like just a basic satellite tracking and acquisition platform. It's going to be doing more things under the hood, trying to measure and dynamically measure the spectrum and sensor spectrum holes and allocate and redo the DVBS codec to kind of tweak the quality of service. But hopefully from your guys' point of view, it just looks like a simple tracking and satellite acquisition tool. But, but I'd love to see what you guys think of it when it's, it should be ready in a couple months. And I'd love to guys for you to guys help me take it out on the road and see what it looks like. So thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. It's very exciting work and uh, very much looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I kind of hope that they are okay with including FPGAs and and all. Uh, but if it ends up being a pure software thing, we're still very interested in in uh, in helping. The use of machine learning and digital communications is um, really pretty remarkable. There's lots of places where this can give you some really good traction, and there. Are there are a lot of people scurrying around trying to figure out the ins and the outs. Um, it's extremely intensely interdisciplinary, which makes it um, somewhat, uh, I don't know, exciting, uh, you know, because uh, it, I guess maneuverability uh, here, <laughs> it might might be a good analog. You know, you, you give up some stability for maneuverability, and this is an interdisciplinary field with uh, where you need a lot of maneuverability. Therefore, the the questions and answers and investigations may not exhibit a whole lot of stability. So there will be lots of blank alleys and things where you hit a brick wall and then other places where you, you run free and you get into a big pasture of delight. So I'm, I'm hoping that we see some of that stuff with your with your research here. Um, well, I, yeah, I mean, I definitely, I see it hitting on two levels, like two roadblocks on the high end. I get the algorithm gets so complex that I need more processing power on what I have to implement it. And an FPGA can to do some of the DSP block is the easiest way to kind of offload some stuff from the general processing. Um, the other side of it is one of the big pitches of this is that these kind of systems satellite like more and more with like hurricanes and other things and earthquakes and other things that are happening, emergency warning and NOAA utilization systems that can get track software data or excuse me weather satellite data quickly are needed more and more around the world in places that don't even have internet access so making these tools readily available where it's more complete unit where it might not be even feasible to say well just hook up to the internet and turn on your computer there are lots of places like in the philippines and other areas where that's not an option so once I figure out the software requirements to at least do the bare bones version of it, another aspect is on the cheap side, trying to make like an FPGA kit that kind of does it so that, you know, even if the, where literally they might just have one antenna that they have to be able that they can feed from. If there's like a simple portable device that might do 90% of the work, like the APALM can do a lot of work now, something similar to that just for graphing satellite data. So there are lots of ways where I could see implementing offloading some of these functions to hardware for my personal research like i said it starts going to be in software but eventually i'm going to start looking at taking some of these blocks into the hardware realm sooner or later just okay, depends well, on who's willing yeah. yeah let's uh well if you don't already have a an account with the remote lab then we'll we can get you set up so that uh so that that doesn't doesn't impede you you know that that sort of uh overhead can we can take care of now and uh, and if you do need to use the resources later on to to kind of start offloading some of the functions proven in in software to, to hardware, then I think that we can we can help there. And uh, I thank you. This is this is really exciting stuff, and uh, look forward to to hearing more about it and and seeing all the progress.